This is Derek from inflatablesupauthority.com and today we are testing out the Blackfin CX Ultra. I'll be giving you my honest opinion on it and see how it goes in the water. Stay tuned. Now we'll be testing the stability of the Blackfin CX Ultra. So I'm already kind of feeling a little bit of difference even just kneeling compared to all around 11 Ultra. I feel like there is a tiny bit less primary stability, but we're gonna stand and we're gonna confirm that. So here we go. Okay. Yeah, the primary stability, pretty good. Me just going right up onto the board. I didn't feel too much kickback, which is good. Um, now just testing the board out. It does feel a little bit more on edge, actually. This is, of course, a more advanced board, so stability is a little bit less of a concern. And now we are going to test the tracking of this board. So we're going to use that dock of the boat as sort of a test. So we're just gonna paddle along and we're gonna try to point it to that and see how many strokes each side before it starts to wander. Now, this test will be a tiny bit flawed because the wind is coming from a bit of a backwards, rightish direction. So the board will um, tilt a little bit more to the right. So let's just keep that in mind as we do this. All right, so let's start now. One, two, three. Five. And now let's point back. The wind is pushing me back to the place. So let's try the right hand side with wind. See how that goes. One, two, three. Yeah, about three and a half. So, not the most ideal conditions to compare the all around 11 ultra because i was using that board in calm conditions and now it's windy so it's a little bit hard but some of my initial impressions is that i do believe the all around 11 ultra tracks a little bit better just from sort of paddling around and maneuvering this board but this board maneuvers a lot better i find it's a lot more um maneuverability friendly let's just say but we're going to do some little tests on that coming up okay so now we're going to do this tracking test with the wind to my back so that we can get a little bit more information on this board so we're going to be going straight to that um, hanger over there so let's try it out one two Three, four, okay, four on one side. Let's try the other side. Okay, make sure it's right. Okay, one, two, three, four. Yeah, so it's about four strokes a side until you have to correct the board. Um, compared to the all around 11 Ultra, I believe is about four and a half, five strokes each side. So what dictates this, or I think what a big factor of that is the fact that the board is a bit shorter. So it's 10 feet, six inches instead of 11 feet that uh, the all around 11 Ultra is. We are now going to be conduct conducting the speed test on this board. So we're gonna go are back to the wind and against the wind. Ooh, okay. So let's try it with the wind right now. So let's go.
the impression on that, the acceleration on this board, I think is slightly better than the all around 11 Ultra. I'll have to test that, but this board, because it's so lightweight at about 19.8 pounds, you can really start accelerating very quickly. So now we're gonna try against the wind. Now we're going to test this board against a bit of wind and some chops. So let's try to paddle fast and see how it goes. So actually, I do like how these two fins, the two fin setup, it holds up against chop. It helps plant the board, which I find three fin setups, sometimes they get a little bit more squirrely, I find. Um, tracking is pretty good. I did notice whenever it's paddling hard that the paddle, you could definitely feel more bend of the paddle um, just because it's a five piece there's more play within those five pieces as opposed to like if you got a three piece paddle where there's only two two three areas where there's bend okay so now we've hit a patch of calm water so what better time than to do some maneuverability tests so we're gonna do see how many sweep strokes this takes for this board to do a 360 so pointing at the shore diagonal here. So let's try it out. One. Two. Three. Oh, three and a half. Three and a half, three and a quarter. So that which is pretty good. Um, I think with the all around 11s I tried, is about four to five, if my memory serves me correct. Now we are going to do some side paddles, see how many side paddles to do a 360. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11, 12, 13, so just about 13, 13 and a quarter, let's just call it, because I did a tiny little paddle there. Um, yeah, so this is actually less than the all around 11s, which did about 15, 16. Now, obviously, the main reason why this board can do that in less strokes is because, as I mentioned, the smaller length that the board is six inches less compared to the all around series. As a side note, you can see Mr. Seal. Ah, oh, he just went under as soon as I talked. <laughs> so as we look over there, there's also another seal down there, but there you go, paddle board. And just say hi. Look at him, he's just floating there. <laughs> Another thing I'm saying, oh, look at him, look at him go. Uh, as you're casually paddling, I do like how this board tracks. It doesn't zigzag at all. So like you can get into a really nice rhythm just paddling on one side when the wind is kind of deflecting against the other side of it. It's not too squirrely. Um, the fins are definitely doing their job in terms of um, keeping the board straight whenever the wind is sort of attacking the board. And that is something I also found with the iRocker all around 11 as well. Against the wind, it was tracking pretty well uh, compared to the board my friend was on, which is the Atoll 11, which is kind of zigzagging around a bit. 
Now that's also because the atoll doesn't have the the um, longer side fins. It just has the little two inch side bite fins that are glued on. But even still, it's things like that that make you see performance differences between boards and how they behave in the water. Pro tip as well, if you have anything at the front of this board or even a lot of inflatable boards in general and it's a little bit choppy, sort of like these conditions uh, and it's a bit windy, there's gonna be water that splashes all over the front. So get like a cooler or some sort of waterproof bag over here so that your belongings don't get wet. For me, I actually put my car keys in a towel so that it ensures that within the cooler, I'm not stuck here. <laughs> okay, so what are my overall on-water impressions of the Blackfin Ultra CX? Um, I liked it, personally. I have also tried a bunch more boards, so I can see how this board is a little bit more on edge. Whenever you do certain maneuvers like that, for example, you can feel a tiny bit more kickback. Um, can a beginner learn on this? Yeah, absolutely. But keep in mind, there will be more of a learning curve and you'll probably find yourself in the water a few more times than you would if you had like the all around 11 Ultra or even the Cruiser Ultra, which is probably the most stable of the Ultra series. Overall, I do like the speed of this board. I also like this paddle a bit better than the all around 11 Ultra. I like how this part is carbon while the one they give you with the other Ultra series, the handle is plastic. So this definitely gives you a nicer feel in the hands. It feels smoother. It just feels like a better user experience when you're using this paddle. Now, obviously this is a board that you have to fold in half lengthwise. And as a result, you need to make it as compact as possible. So with that, you will get a few um, give or take scenarios. And in this case, the give is the five piece paddle. You can feel the bend whenever you paddle harder. With recreational paddles like this, it feels fine. Like it, you won't be able to feel that much of a difference, but I found as soon as I put force on the paddle and I really start to get going, there's a lot more play on it. Um, I do like this board's deck. It, obviously that's not beer by the way, that's a towel and <laughs> water. I swear I don't get drunk before my reviews. Um, yeah, I do like also how this board has kept a lot of the things that make Blackfin a good series, be it there's a lot less things. Like for example, there's three action mounts versus the eight that other Blackfin models have. But I would also say this is one of the quicker Blackfin models due to the width. Overall, do I recommend the Blackfin Ultra CX? Yep. It's a great board on the water, um, especially if you have some paddle boarding experience under you. You want a quick board that maneuvers well. Like, I really like the response on this board. I think this is one of the more responsive boards I've tested. So I really like that. I like how just certain things it can it can turn fairly quickly like let's just say going towards these boats and I could just turn a little bit and just like that I can pretty much go the other way other boards you'll probably need a couple of strokes to do that of course the wind is helping me in this scenario but nonetheless yeah this is Derek from inflatable soft authority thank you for watching and take care